first of all, you need to have a vision for the university, for the institution that's underpinned by inquisitiveness and imagination and an openness to do things differently for new things. Secondly, I do think you have to be a very good communicator uh, to tell the story, to establish a shared purpose, to bring the community together to engage in the change project. Thirdly, I think you have to be a good relationship builder. You have to be able to negotiate, to build trust, but also to enable people to engage in the process, to empower them. Fourthly, I think you have to have a learner mindset because there are so many challenges and you take something new every day. You can't know everything, so you have to develop uh, your skills in that process as well. Fifthly, I think you have to focus uh, on the long term because transformation is a lengthy process. So you have to have the stamina to see that through, but also the agility to change tack in the process uh, as, as it unfolds, uh, rather than having a rigid plan A uh, that you want to adhere to. And I think uh, sixthly, uh, you have to have the confidence as a leader that you are able to take the community with you and to link it up with your external stakeholders as well. The relationship to the governing body is essential uh, because there is a legislative, they approve the strategy, at least in the Irish system, uh, and major uh, policies and so on. So it is really important that you build a partnership approach based on trust transparency and accountability. And as you develop the strategy at executive level, for instance, or your policies, it is also important that uh, you take on board uh, the feedback you get from governing authority in that process. And whilst they approve and whilst they have that oversight function, it is important to give them the opportunity to be involved in the processes early on. For instance, when I develop the university strategy with my executive members, I make sure we have workshop opportunities for members of governing authority to feedback. It is important to give them timely information, accurate information, and also to respond to their needs for detail um, and so on. But uh, And on the other side, I think you have to hone in on the strategic, on dealing with the strategic elements rather than going into the operational detail, which is not a matter for governing authority. In order to support women to take on leadership positions, I do think it is really important to have role models, either within the organization or outside, to develop networks for women in the organization and outside of the organization to support them, to build confidence, assertiveness, but also you know, the soft skills of communication, negotiation, networking, and so on. I do think that coaching and mentoring have to play an important role to support women individually and as groups in order to develop their leadership quality, qualities. Uh, and uh, I do think quotas can play a productive role where the system is really sluggish and doesn't allow for you know, a, a lot of progress in, uh, uh, for women to take on leadership positions or where there are very few women in the organization so that uh, for, uh, with quotas in the recruitment process or for committee work and so on, you support that leadership building exercise. <music>